There are four heart valves in total, divided into two semilunar valves and two atrioventricular valves. At the beginning of systole, the atrioventricular valves close, preventing backflow of blood into the atria while the ventricles contract. As intraventricular pressures rise, blood is pushed through both aortic and pulmonary outflow tracts. At the end of systole, the semilunar valves close, and the atrioventricular valves open, resulting in the start of diastole, where the ventricles fill with blood. This coordinated movement of blood, and the opening and closing of these valves during systole and diastole, result in the heart sounds and murmurs that we sometimes hear during cardiac auscultation. Looking at the valves in more detail, the two atrioventricular valves are the mitral and tricuspid valves. The mitral valve is also known as the left atrioventricular valve, or bicuspid valve, because it has two leaflets. It lies at the inlet between the left atrium and ventricle. The tricuspid valve is also known as the right atrioventricular valve, and, as its name suggests, has three leaflets. It lies at the inlet between the right atrium and ventricle. These atrioventricular valves close during ventricular systole, preventing the backflow of blood into the atria resulting in the S1 heart sound. The two semilunar valves are the aortic and pulmonic valves, both of which have three leaflets. The aortic valve, also known as the left semilunar valve, separates the left ventricular outflow tract from the ascending aorta. The pulmonic valve, also known as the right semilunar valve, separates the right ventricular outflow tract of the right ventricle from the pulmonary trunk. Closure of these valves results in the S2 heart sound at the end of systole. To put this all together, let's listen to a normal heart sound. When listening to this heart sound, this is S1, and remember, it reflects the closure of the atrioventricular valves, which makes this S2, representing the closure of the semilunar valves. The last thing to point out here is that the interval between S1 and S2 is systole, and this is the time during which the ventricles contract. This interval here, between S2 and the S1 of the next cardiac cycle, is diastole, which is the time during which the ventricles fill with blood.